What's up guys, uh, welcome back. This is your boy again, Adam Slink. How you guys doing? As usual, support your boy, like this video, comment, share it on all the social platform. Follow me on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Adam Slink, and make sure you subscribe. Then click the bell notification to get updates anytime, any day I upload. And also good morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where you are watching this video from. So guys, to all the football lovers, let's discuss about uh, football first. The other day, I made a video concerning Messi, and I said that uh, Messi didn't deserve to win this year by London. Of course, I saw all your comments. Even Messi himself wasn't worth expecting the award. In fact, this is what he said. He said, Lewandowski deserved to win this award. That is coming from Messi. He even believed that uh, they robbed Lewandowski. Well, that is coming from Messi. You know, eh? fans, I think fans, fans are allowed to make all sorts of comments. Even myself, allowed to make all sorts of comments. But, as a sportman, as a footballer, I, I do not think you are allowed, it's sensible for you to directly and indirectly mock another footballer. No, because you have to show that sportmanship. And honestly, the other time I talked about how Ronaldo, fans were trying to uh, pick point Ronaldo for being jealous of our Messi, and uh, Ronaldo came out to categorically deny that fact. That is not jealous of Messi. Well, as at yesterday, there was a comment. Someone made a comment about uh, Messi not deserving the award. And guess what? Ronaldo wrote under that comment. He simply said, fact. Also liking that comment. That was directly downgrading Messi. And again, you said that you are not jealous of Messi. Well, let me just read a few. The person said, Cristiano Ronaldo this year, Coppa Italian, Italia Super Cup, top scorer of the Euro, uh, Europa Cup, top scorer of the Italia Championship, Juventus top, top scorer in the 2021 to 2020, 2020 to 2021 season, Master United top scorer. Well, the whole idea of this whole comment was that uh, he was trying as much as the person wrote that Cristiano Ronaldo was far more better this season than Messi. And also, Lewandowski deserved to win that award than Messi. Cristiano Ronaldo wrote under it and said facts, and also liked this comment. Well, a lot of people saw it. Of course, Cristiano Ronaldo. They saw it and they said, "No, you said you were not jealous of Messi, but still, it's what you are doing." Automatically, point to the fact that you are jealous of Messi. In fact, Messi father even replied, and he. Just simply wrote blah 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 continua. Well, he won it, so let's see who will take it the next season. I believe maybe because of the way Messi is so humble, reserved. That's why you see him getting all these awards. Uh, then now let's talk about David O. David O made a comment the other day. He was interviewed and he talked about his father's wealth or uh, and how he never knew that his father was rich. In fact, let me play the video. Even like till date, he's so like still so humble and modest with the way he spends, the way he goes about his business, the way he handles his business. It's still amazing to me. Um, I remember growing up like from like my younger days till I was like 11, I wasn't really close with my dad because he was all about work, 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 work. I remember him coming home late every day, you know, building something. I didn't know what, what he was doing. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know he was rich. Really. <laughs> I didn't even know Surprise. He was, I didn't know he was rich till like, till probably I was like 13. Wow. Because he lived so normal. Like, I even know he was a billionaire driving a Honda. I remember. He had a silver, brand new, but he had a silver Honda Accord. He had a driver. My mom had like, a, I think like a Toyota or so, or a Honda truck or something. So like, I didn't know. They lived so modest mm -hmm. until we moved out the house to the new house. So we get to the new house. <laughs> I'll never forget. So we get to the new house and I'm like, Oh, we lit. <laughs> <laughs> we have heard him saying, uh, talking about similar story, but uh, I think that's exactly the way David O is currently, just like his father. Just that David O like to spend a lot, but when it comes to closeness to friends, how to take other people along? You no, know, I think he actually got that from his dad. Well, that's all from uh, David Odo. And check out a video I saw recently that shows a pastor. I know some of you may have already seen this video. So I myself, I'm just recently seeing it. 
No, no, I've saw it before. Someone sent it to me. Yes, I saw it, but I never really had that chance to talk about it. But uh, this time I saw it again. Then I decided to just, you know, let me share it with you guys. Honestly, I do not understand. Hmm? I don't understand where the whole idea is coming from that you have to punish yourself before God can maybe bless or forgive you or maybe show you some miracle or divine healing. I do not understand that. This uh, man carrying a belt, to flog members, both male and female, to flog them mercilessly because I do not understand what they are looking for. Righteousness, wealth, deliverance, whatever. I do not understand. But uh, please kindly uh, leave your comment below and tell me exactly how you feel about that. There is this uh, 12 years old student who was allegedly beaten to death because he refused to join a court in school. So the person who shared this, uh, this, this uh, picture, this old story said, this is my 12 years old cousin that was beaten to death at a school that cost over 1 million naira. Yes, yeah, so they tried to put him in court. He refused and they killed him. Secondary school, he refused to blend and they literally beat him to death. It's a boarding school in Lagos. They called my uncle that he wasn't well, so he went there, took him and admitted to an hospital in, in Worry that where he passed, but confessed that they tried blending him into court. That is the young man, just lost his life. Meanwhile, the school had denied it. The school denied it, say no, he was actually sick, he wasn't beating, nothing like that came up. The school denied it. And according to the uncle, the uncle before this young guy, this young, very bright man, Yes, a man. Let, let me use the word man. Boy passed, he confessed, and he told his uncle what happened. I just hope that his uncle recorded everything on phone. Recorded everything. So that they can actually sue that school. So fortunate. I see this kind of things in body school, but courtesy is what I have not seen before, honestly. Courtesy is what I have not seen before. But I know in body school, you see uh seniors discipline or maltreating the juniors you see seniors setting fight between juniors you see all sorts of things in body school because i am a product of a body school for right from primary school to secondary school all is in fact almost all my life <laughs> right from primary school to secondary school i was in body school so i i know exactly how it feels like like not just this uh, rich body school this locally made but school that is what i well, i don't know what will happen maybe definitely they will definitely go to court because i can be paying one million naira for uh, a fee school fees and uh, you are telling me that my child is sick that I should come and take what are you talking man no no there's this footballer in nigeria, nigeria footballer his father is quite rich his father is uh, the dg of dss no, as a as a person who has a political appointment to head the office in Nigeria, they are usually filthy rich. Filthy rich. Well, do not ask me how they make their money because that is also a mystery to me because I want to know. How can you hold a public office and still be so extremely rich and your salary is like 1 million naira, 2 million naira or even 4 million naira per month? Your allowances as well combined will be like 10 million naira per month. But you are business buying out of 300 million naira or 5 million US dollars. And meanwhile, that doesn't really correspond with your allowances and salary. So do not ask me how they make their money because I do not know. So this footballer is really, really a nice footballer, plays very well. He said anybody who referred to him as the son of DG of DSS, that he has the right to sue you. <laughs> so, uh, let me read what he, he wrote. He said, his name is Abba. Short notice to all Nigerians' media, houses, and blogs. 
please stop addressing me as the son of DJ DSS. Address me by my full name, Bichi Yusuf Abba. The office order should be addressed as that, not me. I have all the right to charge anyone who addressed me as such to court. Please stay away from associating me with my father's office. DG DSS is not a family title, but a national title to, or to the holder of the office. I am a Nigerian footballer and my month of eligibility to sign a professional contract in Europe is here. So address me as a Nigerian international footballer. Please take note. Well, I, I sorry if I ever mention or because I'm please do not sue me. I, I'm just reading this. Well, uh, a Nigerian international footballer, Baba Abba Bichi, just said what he said. So make sure you correspond with that. Sergeant Sumanu sued a mom's doctor for allowing her to be born, and uh, this woman won millions in damages. Can you imagine, guys? It said a show jumping star who sued a mom's doctor for allowing her to be born has won the right to millions in damage in a landmark high court ruling today, December 1st, yesterday. Evie, 20 years old, was born with spinal bifida and sometimes spent 24 hours a day connected up to a tube. Despite that, she had forged a career in show jumping, competing against both disabled and able body riders. She has also gone to the meeting to the to go on to meet the Prince Harry and Meghan. Last month, in a awful conception, damages claim Evie sued Dr. Philip over his failure to advise her mom, Carolina. 50 years old to take vital supplement before getting pregnant. She claimed that if the doctor had told her mother that she needed to take folic acid supplement to maximize the risk of spinal bifida affecting her baby, she would have put off getting pregnant until she had done so. And as a result, Evie would never have been born at all. In the landmark ruling in London today, December, George Rosaline backed Avis' case and awarded her the right to a huge compensation payout. A lawyer earlier said the amount Evie is claiming has not yet been calculated, but confirmed that it would be big since it would cover the cost of her extensive care needs for life ah that's actually really good though so the girl is blaming the his mom uh his mom doctor then that you should have uh advised my mom to take some some supplements before getting pregnant because even when you get pregnant there are some medicine that, is, that are really really advised for pregnant women to be taking yeah even before and after pregnancy then this this girl is suing the doctor for not advising her mom there where well, now she's having a serious illness she has been managing and she will manage it for the rest of her life oh there are a lot of people in nigeria who would have loved to sue their mom's doctor because they were born in nigeria they should have advised their mom see travel first come up for nigeria before you born no. come up for nigeria before you born no. all those kind of things uh but uh thank god for the girl she won millions so she should enjoy it i hope that that money will be enough for her to take care of herself and uh intensive care then uh i talked i was i wanted to talk about this next issue on my yesterday's video but because of uh i talked about it actually but i do not know youtube <laughs> youtube was not really happy with the way i discussed the issue I talked about this uh, new uh, C19 something because I don't want to mention the name. I do not know it because of me mentioning the name that uh, making them to flag it. I do not know. So about this C19 something that Nigeria just recently admitted that is in Nigeria. Meanwhile, Canada has already placed a ban on Nigeria 
and uh, also two Nigerian flew to Canada and of course uh, they were discovered that uh, they had this particular thing and then they immediately alerted Nigeria so Canada, I think Canada is the only country now who has placed a band on Nigeria so I do not know other, other countries as well who still place a band on Nigeria but I'm praying that uh, they, they shouldn't place a ban on somewhere like France. You know why? Because I'm expecting my woman to come soon. So I'm not praying they should place, uh, France should place a ban on Nigeria, honestly. Yeah? You know, and also there are loved ones also you would like, like, like to meet and you are expecting them this December. So let's see hope. Let's see hope. But uh, like I've said, like I, I, I said yesterday, I wasn't able to publish it, guys. I don't understand why we are so quick to accept of certain things. So please, if uh, it's a way to collect palliative and all the rest, please stop it. So I rest my case there. Visible. To always tell someone where you are going to or who you are meeting. Most especially if you are young. But what about couples? Husband and wife. Is it proper? Is it... Is it proper in a way that whenever you are going out, you will call your wife, babe, I'm going so-so place, so I'm going to meet up with person. Or where, whenever the woman is going out, the woman will call her boyfriend or her husband, say, honey, I'm going to so-so place, I'm meeting up with person. Or if you want to call someone, look, I want to call this person or whatever. Is it that it's, it's a form of controlling or it's a form of respect? So uh, a female pastor, Idaosa Loria, said, Telling your partner where you are, who you are with, what time are you coming home, is not being controlled. It's showing respect. Pay attention to the person, people, that you naturally want to update regularly. They are your person, people. If you are in a relationship and you are fighting with the ideal of being accountable, you probably need to re-examine why you are still with that person. So someone then asks her, what if is the opposite partner obsessive demand to know your whereabouts? Then she replied, if they are demanding, it is either because there is a lack of trust on their part or a sticky side on yours. Check yourself first. Make sure you are making honorable decisions. Then you can address the tone of your partners. If you are in an abusive and controlling relationship, that is an entirely different subject. Well, uh, you know, some people won't like it when uh, your boyfriend or your girlfriend is asking you, where are you going to, or where, when are you coming back, who you, uh, are you going to meet? In fact, I believe that you don't, you don't necessarily have to wait for your girlfriend, the one you walk strong, the one you want to marry, the one you want to start a life with, not that one you are playing around with. I do not think you need to wait for that person to ask you, say, to ask you, oh, where are you at? Or where are you going to? I think you hold that person as permission to be like, see, babe, Alpha, I will come out in case you call me, I'm at this place, I want to meet up with somebody. Just tell her or tell him because no, not to just, it's not, don't wait until that person is asking you, where are you? Are you in such a so place? The whole that person respects to just see what you are doing. Then guys, uh, to end this video, uh, this last one is coming from Reno Mockery. He said something about tight. A pastor tells you that by paying tight, you have divine protection. Then that same pastor goes out with armed security protecting him. It is high that he does not pay his sight or he does not believe what he told you. Divine protection comes by faith, not by tithe. In fact, God ordained a day for you to be born and a day for you to die. Tight or no tight, you no one can kill you before that day. And no one can extend your life be beyond that day. Christ never collected tithe. His disciples never collected tithe. Do you know why? Because they were not liberties. Only liberties collected tithe because 
they were prevented from walking by God. You see, this in number 18, verse 21, New Testament, pastor walked at 30 to 34, Old Testament, prophet walked, 2 Kings 16, okay, the only people who did not walk were Levites, and pastors are not Levites. Well, that is coming from uh, Reno or Mercury about Titan. Well, I don't know. No, this has been a topic for a long time now. If it's good to pay tight or if it affects us spiritually or this, if we do not pay tight, if we're not going to get divine things or that, or no? It's a confusing statement. Well, thank you guys for watching. Support, I'm going to catch you on my next video. Stay blessed. Bye.